community life. I put these thoughts together in my room at my computer. Downstairs, my fellow Spiritan is reading the paper, and our housekeeper has arrived to prepare our evening dinner. She comes three times a week. This morning, we prayed morning prayer and celebrated Mass together. We share our thoughts on one or other reading at each Mass. Occasionally, I am out for Mass. We eat breakfast together in the kitchen with intermittent comments read what it says in the papers each day. We eat lunch in the kitchen, usually but not always at the same time. There may be a comment or two from what we came across during the morning or what the mail brought into our house. This evening we'll linger over dinner. Who knows what topics may surface? A memory, a current issue or happening, what we read in the papers or came across in our website browsing. Ours is an easygoing relationship. We've known each other since 1953 in the seminary. I've lived in larger communities. The timetable was more spelled out. The prayers were more read than prayed. The homily was one-sided. The mealtimes more animated. The roles more codified. So I guess community depends a lot on size, on cultural makeup, on age differences. One size doesn't fit all. And who knows, the current chapter three in our spirit and rule of life may be modified at the next general chapter. But whatever its basic framework, it's up to each group of spiritans to make their community real. I've read over the feedback towards the 20th general chapter. Community life gets three pages, starting with the sentence, the theme of community has always been present in the agenda of the general chapter and chapters or assemblies of circumscriptions. So, has not everything already been said about community life? Yes and no. According to the chapter document, certain new styles of being spiritan are emerging and need to be monitored. Issues around individualism and a consumerist mentality, the poor quality of interpersonal relationships, inappropriate behaviors, a trend to diocesanization, I think that's how you pronounce that word, lack of preparation to live internationally, poor community leadership, etc. And then comes a paragraph highlighting the gap between our beautiful declarations on community and our day-to-day -day living them out. What else is new? Doesn't the real always fall short of the ideal? Continually recurring topics follow in the document. Privileged spaces of listening to the spirit, prayer, dialogue, table fellowship, meetings, finances, discernment, co-responsibility, planning and evaluation, mutual support, etc., etc., etc. Seems like a per omnia secula seculorum list. The rest of the chapter on community life deals with a together we form one family, individualism, the role of the superior, tensions, internationality, older confrères as a treasure, community life cannot be sacrificed to mission, and finally, cooperation with lay associates. The tasks given each of us are one, indicate the points you would like the general chapter to deal with. Two, 
give the reasons for your choice, and three, some practical orientations to help us go forward. Despite all the sometimes exaggerated claims made in the name of community, there's no doubt it does happen around a tragedy, a death, a particular celebration, an anniversary, here's where we excel. A quote from Jean Vanier, Christian community is not about perfect people. Is that true of spirit and community too? But then remember, Jesus rejoiced more over the last, the least, the last, and the little than over all the winners in the world. So anything we can do to include those who are usually excluded, anything we can do to seek those who are somewhat lost, anything we can do to extend the circle of those who belong, that's how we, that's how we become what we are, people who have the mind of Christ. I go back to Jean Vanier. In a true community, we will not choose our companions. Instead, our companions will be given to us by grace. And often, they will be the persons who will upset our settled view of self, our settled view of the world. In fact, we might define true community as that place where the person you least want to live with always lives." Unquote. I like that last sentence. True community is the place where the person you least want to live with always lives. So Vanier goes on, Christian community is not about perfect people. Each of us is our own mixture of good and bad, darkness and light, love and hate. Is that spirit and community too? Does community come from the top down or from the bottom up? Top down. The statements in our rule of life are from the last general chapter. Bottom up. The lives that intersect our lives the commitment and struggles in which we discover ourselves as allies. Is our longing for warmth and understanding bound to end up in disappointment and heartbreak? Community is born and reborn when we move beyond looking out for self to living for each other. Martin Buber puts it this way, all real living is meeting, a living mutual relation with a living center and a living mutual relation with one another. Think of that again. All real living is meeting, a living mutual relation with a living center and a living mutual relation with one another. Organization may get the job done, but by itself it will not create community. Among us, we need those who have vision and far-seeing eyes, those who notice when things are going wrong, those who render small and often unnoticed services, those who create a welcoming and a relaxing atmosphere, those who listen and pay attention, those who initiate and get things going. In a real community, we can call forth from others what they have within them. We need those who pay attention, who sit down with and suffer with others, who take care of each other, even if it means just being there and not knowing what to say or what to do. God needs us as partners. We need each other as partners. 
a definition of partner from Rabbi Gelman. A partner is someone you work with on a big thing that neither of you can do alone. And out of that I recall what Augustine said, without God we are not, without us God will not. A sure sign of community is its compassion, its support and strength for those in it or outside it who are not strong enough to go it alone. This may be as simple as listening to someone who tells me why he had a sleepless night. It may be as significant as being there when a death or a separation or an illness hits hard. Compassion is the cupped hand. Jean Vanier again. Think of a small wounded bird. If I hold it in a totally open hand, it may well flutter its wings, crawl over to the edge, and fall to the ground. If I close my hand into a fist, I will crush it to death. If I hold it in a cupped hand, neither totally open nor totally closed, it will feel safe and cared for. Community doesn't automatically happen, nor can you just kneel down and pray for it to happen. It must be worked at. Fashion me a people. And the foundation seems to be trust being open with one another, taking the risk that our own vision of community will be enlarged or perhaps even written off by the vision of others. And then real presence seems to be a major component of community building. Real presence, paying attention, noticing, making room for the other by getting out of ourselves. A story. At the Last Supper, Jesus looked around the table at his best friends. He saw Judas, the collaborator, Peter, who would deny he'd ever clapped eyes on him, and the others who would scatter when the crunch came. Then he turned to the waiter and said, separate checks, please. A gospel community eats together. On the hillside, on the lake shore, in the boat, in Peter's home, at weddings, in the upper room. Hilaire Belloc comes to mind. Where'er the Catholic sun doth shine, there's music and laughter and good red wine. At least, I've always found it so. Benedicamus Domino. A gospel community knows each other by name and calls each other by name. I think of Isaiah's words, I have called you by name, you are mine. Hospitality is a core characteristic of a gospel community. Open the door, make everyone feel welcome, spend time with, listen to, eat and drink with, pay attention to different needs and moods. When people share life, they create a tangible atmosphere that makes both members and guests feel understood, accepted, cared for, and loved. Marty Huggins' All Are Welcome is a popular contemporary song. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. And so a gospel community is aware of those who hang around the door in two minds as to whether to come in or not. A gospel community goes to that door, opens it, and makes them feel at home. Sometimes we crush rather than call forth. We don't listen. We haven't time. We need to be center stage. 
Our way is the only right way. We don't need any looking after. We're outwardly nice, but inwardly shallow. What I say, I don't feel. What I feel, I don't show. What I show isn't real. Lord, what is real, I don't know. Christian community, again, is not about perfect people. We are wounded healers needing forgiveness. Reconciliation is not just a sacrament for others. Meister Eckhart wrote, the best name for God is compassion. We are called together to make God's compassion visible in the concreteness of every day. He who loves community destroys community. He who loves the brethren builds community, wrote Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Individuality, yes. Individualism, no. All contributions gratefully received. Much of what I've said could be summed up in this final reflection. Opening hands. I see, Lord, in my tightly clenched fists the representation of myself. I hold on to my cares, my possessions, my gifts, and my pride. I shut you out lest you change me. I shut others out lest they hurt me, lest they know me. But in my tight knuckles and tense forearms, I see what this is doing to me. I am tense, sore, and lonely. I am closed in on myself. And so I slowly open my hands and release myself to you, Lord. Take my cares, my burdens, my emptiness, and my loneliness. Thank you for release, for freedom, for peace. With open hands, I no longer shut you out or shut others out. Open hands are for helping. I fill them with your love, show them how to give, how to serve. Now I am aware of the hurts and needs of others. I place them in these hands and lift them to you for your sustaining grace and healing touch. I reach out to grasp the hand of sister and of brother. I thank you for him and for her. I pray for her and for him. Shape us together into the body of Christ.